Hello there everyone, welcome back to another episode of Should You Pull for Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. Now this banner is going to be a nice and fun and interesting one because it's got some really powerful stuff on it and it's going to be all FF12 themed. Now, I know there are a lot of FF12 fans out there. There's only one new EX weapon this time around and much like Freya's banner, it's not going to belong to the character that's coming out that's new. It belongs to Ash. But Fran is coming on this banner, and she is a 35 CP character that can keep up with a lot of EX based characters, much in the same vein as Freya did not too long ago. And then Balthea is also getting a rework, which makes him significantly stronger than he once was. So if you want to find out more about all three of these characters and whether this banner is worth pulling on, then stay tuned and keep on watching. As always, don't forget to check all of the social links in the description box below, including my Twitch channel, where you can see my schedule just on the right here, for those of you who want to come watch that. Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, all that good stuff. Don't forget to check out DecidiaDB.com, as it's a fantastic resource for all things Opera Omnia. And of course, don't forget to check out all of the other so uh, social media content creators and all of that good stuff for Decidia Opera Omnia, as there's loads of us out here, and we all work really hard to bring you the entertainment and the information that you guys need. Now we're going to start with Balthea with this banner, as he doesn't gain any new weapons or anything, but he gets a rework with this banner that actually, as I said at the beginning of this video, does increase his viability quite a bit. I mean, Balthea was never an amazing character to begin with, and then when he got his level 60 awakening he was okay for a little while, but he fell off pretty quickly. But what he gets now is he gets some like framed buffs that come off of his skills that make him a little bit stronger as you go along. So what this is, is it's the Sky Pirate style buff. So what the, you, you get very the way of the Sky Pirate, however it ends up being um, sort of translated. And what these do is they kind of grant stackable abilities depending on how many stacks the Sky Pirate, way of the Sky Pirate or Sky Pirate's um, style, however you want to call it, um, depending on how many he has up to a maximum of three. So at one, he gets a physical attack up, which is I believe 40%. Then at two, he gets a, a large max bravery buff. And then at three, he gets, um, a, a, he gets an attack up and he also gets plus versions of his abilities, which we'll cover in a moment. So what his two abilities do as of right now is they are there to steal buffs and dispel units. So while he doesn't have any EX just yet, I mean the one that you can see Fires of War is coming and it is a quite a strong one, we're not going to be getting that this time around. But Snapshot and Great Aim are both there in order to steal random buffs from your opponents. And this can actually add up quite a lot when you consider a lot of bosses tend to use framed buffs to make it so that they're harder to beat. When Ifrit was about, I actually used Balthea quite a lot. He helped that he was a super synergy carrier, but I used him quite a lot to steal the, the Veil defense buff from him so that he didn't. He just took damage regularly like most enemies do. But now, he actually does a lot more damage on top of it, albeit only to a single target in terms of HP damage. But when you use Snatchshot, it's a two-hit brave, brave AoE attack followed by a single target HP attack that will steal and remove a buff from every target. And if he steals one, he gets another turn on top of it. And then if you have Sky Pirate style at three stacks, it then gets another two brave attacks added onto it. And then it does, well, it, you know, you get more stacks from Sky Pirate style. If you you just do a lot more damage with it, it has 120% max brave overflow. It just does a lot more damage, and obviously you're stealing buffs and getting the purpose that you want out of Althea already. And then Great Aim does a lot more damage to a single target. It's a single Brave HP attack, but it steals three buffs from your opponent and extends them by a turn as it does with Snapshot. But the plus version of it, if you have three stacks of Sky Pirate style, is a three hit Brave HP attack and also has 120% overflow. The issue that Balthea has is that despite the fact that he gets quite nice buffs from his rework, he doesn't have an HP attack plus. He does get a Brave attack plus from the Snapshot extend, so that you can use um, you know, a double attack bravery that still has a chance of stealing a buff from a target. But he doesn't get an HP attack plus from his great aim, which is sad because despite because he doesn't have an EX either, he's gonna have some issues in his sustain. He's not gonna last as long as a lot of characters that have an EX. But that being said, I think that because his rework is actually quite good, if you happen to get his stuff while you're chasing Fran and Ash, I wouldn't be mad about it. So now we're going to have a quick look at Fran, who is the new character on this banner. Now Fran doesn't come with an EX weapon this time around, but quite frankly at this point she doesn't actually need to. She's a great character with just her 15 CP weapon and her 35 CP weapon. 
Now the role that she brings to the table is that she is a ranged attacker debuffer. Her debuffing skills are actually really quite strong and compound very well with other characters. So if you have, say, Sarah or Kefka or Pain when she gets released next month, then Fran is going to go really nicely alongside those characters because she does framed debuffs. Now what she gets from her 15 and 35 CP weapon is that she'll get additional stacks of Viera's Punishment, which is the framed debuff, from those weapons as well as inflicting other debuffs at the same time. Her 15 CP weapon will also extend the duration of the uh, framed buff that she gets from using her, frame, uh, her 15 CP attack, which is Feral Strike, so she gets more attack, more max bravery, and she just hits really hard. And I would like to point out that both of the attack skills that she has both hit really hard anyway. And also Aerial Archer enables her to have a Brave Attack Plus and an HP Attack Plus, which, as we all know, extends the sustain of any character that you use, especially with her HP Attack Plus being an AoE Brave single target HP. So you're going to want to take her to both single target events and multiple bosses. It's, it's, she's just really good all across the board. But what is Vieira's Punishment exactly? It's a stackable debuff and it extends depending how many times a boss or enemy has been hit by Fran with her skills. So you'll get two stacks of it depending on which skill you use and whether you've got um, the 15 and 35 CP passives. But all five stacks together will include 20% defense down, 20% attack down, 20% max bravery down, 10% magic attack down, and range resist down. That last one is extra nice because you can pair her up with other characters that are range based, so other archers like Sarah, who is also a debuffer, so that's going to be fun to use, or Lena, so that you can get the defensive buffs on your side with Lena, and offensive debuff. Uh, you can get defensive buffs with Lena and offensive debuffs with Fran while using a third character just to clean house. Then her 55 and 60 CP passive, as I say, give her her Brave Attack Plus and her HP Attack Plus while she has Aerial Archer available, and she does a lot more damage based on what she's got in terms of crystal passes, but also when she's got maximum um, Viera, uh, Viera's punishment stacks, her Feral Strike and Whip Kick abilities become plus versions of themselves, which do significantly stronger damage and have 150% overflow in Feral Strike's case and a massive 180% overflow in Whip, Kick's, um, in Whip Kick's case. And the Whip Kick does alternating Brave attacks to various different enemies so if there's three of them, it'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then do an HP attack that's split damage across the board. And it just does a massive amount of damage. It's actually really quite impressive how much damage Fran deals, considering the fact that she doesn't actually have any X weapon. So as I say, she's really good alongside other debuffers like Sarah or Kefka. She's really good against you know, up against other sort of ranged based characters, so Lena, Sarah. Uh, Noctis, when he gets his rework, is a range-based character and will benefit greatly from having Fran in your party. This is it, She's just a really solid character. Now, Ash actually gets a rework and an EX weapon this time around, so Ash is going to get quite the overhaul this time. And she's not a bad character now, but the issue she always had is that she just didn't really do a lot of damage. She, did, she was there for the buffs, and that was pretty much it. She wasn't a battery, really. She just kind of did things and you got party based buffs, magic attack, physical attack and attack in general, max bravery, they were nice to have but now with this rework that she has, she's actually going to hit significantly harder, she also has a you know party wide aura which is always brilliant to have, so with her level 54 CP passive it raises max bravery, with her level 58 it raises attack and speed, which is fantastic. And then Norsen's Glow and Heavy gets an HP attack, which is sorely needed. It, you know, it couldn't stress enough just how much it needed an HP attack, because it was really rough having to choose between getting the sort of the, the physical attack up and getting a, a an HP attack from Heaven's Wrath, or getting a um, magical attack up, which be benefits her better from Norsen's Glow, but not getting an HP attack at the end of it. It was like, I didn't really like this. But you get an HP attack off of both of them now. And it also, they get 150% um, max Brave Overflow, which is fantastic for her. And she sorely needs it. Because now you don't have to focus so heavily on her getting her max Brave and you just want raw damage. And the tremendous Brave Potency that it mentions here in Dissidia DB is actually a very significant boost. And it does make it so that both of these attacks actually do a pretty large amount of damage. So you're getting your magical attack up, your physical attack up, your max brave buff, 
you're getting party-wide auras from Ash herself just by being there while she's buffed, and she obviously will be because both of her skills buff her. She's just really, really good, and we haven't touched on her EX weapon, so I do want to have a quick look at that. Now, Ash is pretty solid with just her 15 and 35 CP weapons, because the buffs you get for her, uh, from her are really potent, and you get a lot of them, and that's nice in and of itself. But that we don't want a good character, we want a great character. And her EX weapon is what makes her a great character, because it brings something that very few other characters can do. So, as it is, you get Maelstrom's Bolt from her weapon, which is gorgeous, by the way, I love the Sword of Kings. It's with a 5-hit Thunder Elemental Brave HP attack to a single target, that can have 150% max bravery overflow, which is nice, and it gives her a framed buff that's just for her, so that increases her max brave and attack by a further 40%, which is great. But it's not the main reason that you're using it. What you want to be looking at with Ash's Sword of Kings is the full limit break ability you get from it. After Maelstrom's Bolt has finished resolving, you get Arc Blast, which is a 5 hit brave HP thunder attack straight after it. So you have two thunder-based brave HP attacks, though do bear in mind that because Heaven's Wrath is wholly enchanted and because her EX weapon is thunder enchanted, you do have to bear in mind that there are going to be some bosses that re like, can resist one or the other or worse, both of these of these elements, so they're going to limit her ability capabilities quite a lot, but this st she's still very good regardless, and the thing you really want to be looking at when it comes to her full limit break ability is what Arc Blast actually does, which is 100% guarantee a paralysis on your opponent for a turn. So, this makes it so that Ash can be an extremely controlling character, as well as the fact that she's already providing a butt-ton of buffs to your party, and is going to pair up really well with characters like Rosa, or uh, Sarah, or anyone that can provide party-wide auras, because obviously with Ash providing so many buffs, you've only got enough room for so many. She's also going to pair up really well with characters like Quistis or Vayne, and characters that can just disrupt your opponent's turn order really well. And if you could disrupt it long enough, by the time that they've had their one turn that's been paralysed and they're going to go back again, you're going to have it back up again and you can just paralyse them again. Having Ash means that, in combination with the right characters, your opponent's just not going to get a turn, and there's got to be something said for that. While not as strong as some of the characters that come out in the late Chaos era, the, you know, Ash's EX Plus actually isn't too bad. And that 100% paralysis stays relevant for quite a long time, so don't worry too much about that. But she does start the, uh, start the fight with the Dynast King's Bloodline, uh, you know, passive straight away, and she doesn't consume one of her first ability use, which is actually very nice. She gets an HP attack plus just by having her weapon equipped, and it's sad that she doesn't have one naturally now, but she does get one eventually. And it's a straight up 120% max brave overflow, brave HP attack, which is great. It means that Maelstrom's Bolt will also do AoE damage. It, 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 it does do a lot of nice things. It, like I said, it's not up there with some of the EX pluses that we have out there, but it's definitely a one that's nice to have when it comes around. Now, the next time that Ash's EX comes back around again isn't going to be until Yuri's EX weapon comes out. And Yuri's EX weapon banner is actually a really solid one to pull on. So when that comes out, you might pick up Ash's banner the weapon then. And then she doesn't actually get her EX plus during that banner, however, so it's not going to be great there and then. But not long after that, you actually have Fran's EX plus weapon come out along with Ash's EX plus which is going to be a much different, much stronger time to pull for them, although your character roster will look completely different from then. I am of the opinion that I think this banner is really nice, but much like Freya's banner, you have character, you likely have a lot of characters that are really powerful as it is, so you could just switch, trade in weapon tokens for Fran, or do a little bit of pulling for her, and if you get Ash's EX weapon, fantastic. She's a really strong character, and she brings 100% paralysis to the table, and that's a really strong thing. I'm just not sure what... This is a banner that... It's one of those very, very odd banners that I'm really, really struggling to kind of work out how much resources I'm wanting to put into it. I don't... I know I want Fran at least somewhat, because I think that pulling... or grabbing Fran means not having to pull for Pain later, because while Pain is stronger than she is, and does a lot of nice things, Fran is like a budget version of her, and it means that I can save a lot more resources by not having to pull for Pain. And there is that... I mean, there's a lot of people who will pull for Pain, because she is really good, but that's my personal opinion. 
So I don't know whether I want to like pull using tickets and gems or whether I just want to grab her we 35 CP weapon with weapon tokens because like I said, Fran's really good, Ash is really good. I have lots of really good characters that do a lot of the same things they do. So how much resources I want to put into this one, I don't actually know. Besides the fact that they both come back on other banners, you know, a couple of times and Fran doesn't actually need to have much investment in her anyway. As always, massive shout out to Ingwelder and the Tombridge Troop for providing not one, not two, but three fabulous infographics on the characters that we're getting this time around. And as you can see here, Balthea, you know, lots of nice little buffs to himself, and he's actually a really powerful character for very little investment. If you already have his weapons, then you get a half-decent character for free, which is always really nice. He doesn't, however, have any HP plus or any X weapon, so he has no sort of renewable abilities that he can use which does make him suffer in terms of sustain and he's while he has a use which is to counter buffs and like make sure that like things that have buffs just don't have them and he steals them instead and there are some niche cases where he's absolutely backbreaking within that sort of content that is pretty much his only use he's not going to be brought along to event or do events or missions where he's not needed because you if your opponent doesn't really buff themselves then why would you use Balthia over somebody else and then we have Fran, who is obviously very, very strong for her cost. She doesn't cost much to invest into. Like I said, you could skip this banner entirely if you wanted to and just buy her uh, 35 CP with weapon tokens, grab her 15 CP from the event and be done with the banner all told and just save up. She does have, uh, you know, her HP attack plus isn't particularly strong, but it is. I think it's actually really nice because it's an AoE brave attack. It's, it's just nice to have. And then you've got just a lot of nice things that come from Fran in terms of debuff. She pairs up with a large number of characters very well, so I definitely try and grab her one way or another. And then Ash, I'll say, they, they, these guys talk about her as like the buff queen and uh, like does really well with characters with multi-hitting attacks, which I do agree with. Um, but she does use up a lot of buff slots, so there are going to be characters that she's not very good with. As I said earlier, she's got so many different buffs and auras that she's going to make any character much stronger. But a character like Vayne, who burns through turns really quickly, is going to sort of run out of some of those buffs quite quickly. So do bear that in mind before going into her. And as I said earlier as well, she is elemental. So she has, she has holy abilities and lightning abilities. And there are going to be bosses and missions that resist one or both of those elementals. So do bear that in mind before you take Ash into any, any kind of content. So ultimately, do I think that this banner is worth pulling on should you pull for Ashy X and Fran? I'm going to say yes with this one. It's a, it's, a, it's a tepid yes, because I do think that this banner is really strong. If you get Balthea's stuff, his re rework doesn't make him, like, astronomical, but it certainly makes him a lot better than he was, and he's playable, you know, for... You know, if, you, if you're going through, like, Abyss and you need extra characters, then Balthea is certainly not a bad one to pick up after his rework. Fran is... Pretty fantastic for a 35 CP character, and she'll compound very well with a lot of different characters. You know, I've, I've mentioned that she works really well with debuffers, she works really well with other ranged characters. You've also got the fact that she works really well with Ash as well, who is also a very, very strong character that can provide a butt-ton of buffs and works really well with aura characters. And I do love my Rosa, and I love my, I love my Lena. I love characters that have buffs and, and auras and stuff like that, so... I kind of want Ash EX, and I really want Fran, but honestly, it's debatable. It's whether it's up to you whether you want to pull on this banner or not, because a lot of banners at this point in time are going to get overwritten by the level 70 Awakenings era. There's going to be characters like Cloud and Warrior of Light and Noctis that are going to kick a lot of these characters to the curb because they just do a lot more general purpose stuff better. But Ash is still really good, as is Fran, and Balthier is a pretty solid pick too. So yeah, I would recommend pulling on this banner. How much resources I'm willing to put into it and how much I'd recommend you put into it is debatable. If you already have a lot of these characters that are getting reworked, like Wall, like Noctis, etc. Yeah, give it a go. I'd say throw some tickets in, maybe a gem pull or two. If you don't have a lot of these characters, then maybe hold out for them because they're going to serve you a lot, lot better in the long run. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope that I've given you a little bit of insight into what Fran, Ash, and Balthia all do now that they've had their reworks and their releases and re-ex weapons and all that stuff. 
And I hope that you guys have made a decision on whether you want to pull for these characters or not. And if you do decide to pull for them, then I wish you all the best of luck. I really hope that you get your, your, your Fran 35s and your Ash EXs as easily as they come. But thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out all of the social links in the description box below for all of my social media links. Don't forget to come and find me on Twitch as well if you want to come and watch me streaming to City or Opera Omnia. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications for any new videos that I might have pop up. Thank you very much again, and I shall see you in the next video. Bye now.